Well, firstly, a big thank you uh, to Tanya for inviting me on the show. It's always, like I just said, a pleasure doing these things when we're not trading or doing what we do when we're not trading. And uh, thank you, Gary, as well, for a very uh, illuminating uh, presentation. It's certainly um, a lot of good nuggets there. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Robert Colville, I'm founder of TheLazyTrader.com, and um, today we're going to be talking about trading trends. Now, this strategy in particular is one which you can take away with you and really apply. Um, it's most effective in fast-moving trending markets, I accept we don't have these all the time. Markets only really trend about 20% of the time. However, it's pretty good in terms of its effectiveness and the rule-based approach. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I founded the brand The Lazy Trader back in 2012. I used to um, be a journalist back in the day and I discovered the world of trading back in 2007 and I was pretty bad at it actually when I first started. Yep, I made every single mistake in the book several times over. I was certainly not a natural and um, yeah, I lost money. I went long when I should have been going short. I went short when I should have been going long and uh, yeah, it was a bit of a tedious old rocky rise, dare I say. And I know a lot of people People can empathize because as the old expression go uh, trading is simple but it's not easy and it did take me a couple of years um, admittedly I was pretty arrogant with it but it did take me longer than I thought to actually get good at it um, when I was losing money back in those godforsaken days um, I decided to go and trade end of day and end of week on the higher time frames purely because I figured that hey if I was going to be losing money then at least I'll be doing it on a, a, a slow to a slower extent than if I was intraday trading going in and out and funnily enough actually that's why I found my skill set is on the higher time frames trading set and forget I call it and um, the strategies which I certainly trade and teach to my clients um, are applicable on currency markets, stocks, commodities, and dare I say cryptocurrencies, although admittedly uh, my experience in trading cryptocurrencies is somewhat limited. I've traded Bitcoin, but I don't really uh, trade the others, quite frankly. I'm still waiting to see. I've got enough to trade at the moment, quite frankly. But anyway, ever since the brand, the lazy um, was launched in 2012, um, we've since taught thousands of people how to make money from trading from as little as 10 minutes a day. Day. and these people can quite happily trade uh, essentially working their day job so that they haven't got the pressure of having to make an income from uh, trading so the great thing about set and forget end of day trading or end of week trading is it frees up time now as I'm sure you may have seen in some kind of Instagram meme um, time is the most valuable thing you can have ultimately and it's certainly the most precious thing you can give anyone so this for me is great because it means that I can do things that I genuinely enjoy, like traveling, photography. I, I learned salsa <laughs> recently, and I actually have started life drawing um, of all things. And um, I also teach disadvantaged um, entrepreneurs um, in how to grow their businesses. But anyway, let's talk about what we're gonna talk about. I'm pretty sure you didn't take time out of your busy days to listen to me prattling about myself. Okay, so basically what we're gonna be talking about today is the strategy which we can trade in obviously up and down markets, how we can follow the smart money, riding the trend, if you are a surfer or you've ever surfed before, it makes a lot of sense if you're on a wave to ride it to the end rather than jumping off. And we're going to be talking about how to get decent, efficient entries rather than jumping in on spikes, um, whether it's to the upside or to the downside. So here's the disclaimer. There's nothing untowards here at all. Don't you worry. So let's talk about the strategy. Trend Rider Pro, I call it. Um, as of all strategies, there are good points and there are bad points, okay? Pros and cons to every decision um, in life, essentially. The great thing about the daily and the weekly timeframes is that they, for me, certainly in my opinion, they give us clear market perspective. The market structure is better established. We can get clarity knowing that um, essentially bigger players are positioning themselves longer term rather than trading the one or five minute chart, which is a scalper's paradise, but also a great way to get burnt, certainly from my experience. The levels are far stronger, the moves are a lot bigger, and essentially if we can find a decent pullback in an up um, or downtrending market, then we um, are comfortable with the knowledge that certainly there'll be more Verosity potentially with the move and we can get into these bigger moves with less effort rather than waiting um, hell-bent 
over the 15 minute chart or anything like that. Okay, so with this strategy, the pros are we can get into the big moves once they've been confirmed. We can essentially ride the momentum of a fast moving market. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about that with um, what we use in order to determine a fast moving market. We can piggyback the underlying sentiment very easily. Um, it's rule based so that there's little scope for going wrong. It's essentially if the trade's going your way, you've got a set of rules. If it's going against you, you've got a set of rules. And um, the raw potential is decent. I never trade anything less than a two to one. It does epitomize set and forget to its highest degree. So if you're trading on the daily or the weekly time frame, it means that once you've placed your orders up and walked away, then the only time you really need to look at it is the same time the next day. If you're trading the weekly time frame, the only time you really need to look at it is the same time the next week. So you can also apply this to all sorts of different asset classes, currencies, um, stocks, whether you're trading, <laughs> for example, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the Russell, the FTSE, the CAC, the DAX, the Nikkei, you name it. This can be applied to all asset classes and all stocks and dare I say cryptocurrencies as well. Now the downside of course with this strategy, and there's always gonna be a downside to any strategy you trade, is that markets only trend about 20% of the time, but like I'll demonstrate to you later when we look at potential opportunities, uh, you can get trends inside ranges and there are quite a few cross currency pairs which uh, can certainly uh, confirm this. And certainly fewer rules to entry can create a fear-based disposition. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so in a nutshell, and I'm sure many of you have had this before, what we want to do is buy the dip in an upward trend and sell the rally in a downward trend. So Suffice to say, nothing goes up or goes down in a straight line. Markets breathe in and then they breathe out and extend and what we want to do is we want to essentially get a much more efficient price and just simply buying will and nearly or selling in a downward trend will and nearly, we want to wait for the market to pull back so we can get a much more efficient price and a tighter entry than just jumping into the market like amateurs would. Okay, so I know it sounds easy in theory, but we need to be as objective as possible. And one thing, uh, just touching on what I talked about um, earlier or mentioned earlier is the fact that we want um, the market or the chart what we're looking at whether it's a, a stock a crypto or a currency pair we want it to be in a, a certain state a fast moving trend so what we use in order to objectively tell us whether we're in an upward trend or a downward trend is we use a three moving average or three moving averages ema exponential moving average not the simple moving average the reason just um to preempt a question here is Exponential moving averages are weighted more to the present, whereas a simple is basically complete pure mean average. Whereas we have much more uh, preference towards what's happening now um, because it's more reflective of the current market state. And this is why um, any of you have followed us before, we have um, a fast setting for say the RSI setting six rather than 12 or 14 or anything like that because we want to get a snapshot of what's happening right now we see that as a little bit more helpful in the eye of the storm than anything that's lagging too much. Okay, so in, a down, in an upward trend, we want the 20 moving average to be above the 50 and the 50 to be above the 200. That for us is a decent confirmation that we're in an upward trend that we've got good speed and momentum. We want space between the 50 and the 20 and the 50 and the 200. We want them to be angled as well. So order, angle and separation. So just to confirm or, or reiterate, Order, i.e. we want the 20 above the 50, the 50 above the 200. Angle, we want them to be facing, um, if you imagine a clock face between 12 and 230 in that direction. In separation, we want space between the three moving averages essentially. And it's essentially the same in a downward trend except the other way around. If you just get a mirror, we want the 20 moving average to be below the 50 and the 50 moving average to be below the 200. And we want space between them. That order, angle and separation, if you think of the angle, we want the angle to be facing between, if you imagine the clock face, between 4 and 6 p.m., okay, because that is indicative of the fact that we have a decent moving, fast moving downward trend with speed and momentum behind us. As traders, we want speed and momentum ultimately because it enables us to get to our verdicts far quicker and for us to essentially take our profits if we're winning and if we're losing, then at least we can 
take the loss and just move on essentially. There's nothing worse than being in a trade and for there to be inactivity. And <laughs> even worse than that is being in a trade which is offside and then you're stuck and it's moving sideways and doing nothing. Okay, so fast moving trending markets is what we want. Then we want to look at the cyclicity, the C word. Yes, we want essentially not just the moving averages. I mean, the moving averages will be a product of the cyclicity, but we want essentially higher highs and higher lows. If we can see, if you can see here, we've got higher peaks and higher troughs. Um, I know this is an animation. We'll go to actual real examples a little bit later on. But uh, conversely, in a downward trend, we want lower peaks and lower troughs, making lower highs and lower lows. It's a sign to us that the market is trending downwards, very obvious sign. In fact, it's the ultimate confirmation that we're trending downwards when we've got the order angle and separation of the moving averages and the cyclicity is following suit, stepping down. Like I mentioned, nothing ever goes up or down in the straight line. And typically what we want to do as traders is simply identify these markets where there's decent speed and momentum and take advantage of a pullback. After the market's made a new low and pulled back, we want to take advantage and sell at the new lower high. OK, so as with um, any strategy, this is no different when it comes to selection, timing and management. OK, we want to have a very clear idea as to what we want to trade, and when and how. So like I just mentioned, we have lower highs and lower lows. We've got the moving averages um, in the right order. What we want is a pullback consisting of at least three buyer bars and say for example we're looking at trading in pullback in a downward trend what we want is a pullback of at least three buyer bars with a higher high and a higher low and then we want to essentially identify our signal bar which is what we call a bearish pin bar reversal it could be a green bar or a red bar a buyer bar or a seller bar it doesn't matter really what color it is as long as we've got that iconic tail and we've got the open and close in the bottom third of the bar. OK, to quantify the tail, I'd like it to be three times, at least three times the distance between our open and close of the bar, which is in the bottom third of the bar. OK, so that's our signal. That's a sign that in a downward trend, the market is retraced and it's failed. To really kind of like breach anywhere meaningful and the bears have come steaming, steamrolling back into the market. And this is where our ears are pricked. So what we do is we place our entry just below the low of that bearish pin bar reversal with our stop loss above the high. And then what we do is we trail above the high of every second seller bar because we want to ultimately give our trade enough room to move against us before ultimately moving in our favor. And we want to also, also systematically uh, lock in profit along the way, but we don't want to be too aggressive with our um, management technique. A lot of traders, certainly newbies, when they um, come to a profitable trade, their temptation is to immediately bank in the profits and they're too aggressive. They're trailing their stop loss um, just behind where the market is and then they're stopped out only to their horror to see the market goes even more in their favour and some more. And that's always frustrating when you're out prematurely from a trade setup which ultimately makes a fortune, except you're not in it, you've made a very small gain and you've had to endure a number of losses in order to get to that enormous great kahuna run. So that is the, the reason why we are systematic in our way of trailing. And this style of trailing stop loss is good for a fast moving market. Ultimately, if we have order angle and separation with these moving averages and we've got speed and momentum behind the market, we won't see much dithering around. Okay, so here's an example. I know it's an old example. We'll go to some more actually on the charts very soon and I'll drop a watch list for you also. So if we go and identify Euro New Zealand, we can see that we've got the 20 below the 50, the 50 below the 200. We've had this pullback. We've got bearish pin bar reversal or doji bar. Doji bars are actually fine as well. We've got this horizontal level and we've got the completion of our ABCD pattern. You don't really need to know about ABCD patterns for this. It's something we trade, but for this example, we've got a bearish pin bar reversal, a minimum of three bars retracement, and we have our signal to sell. So our entry is just below the low, stop loss above the high. You can see what it's like on the larger time frames here. Stonking big downward trend on the weekly as well. And then we trail for every second seller bar. And as 
the old expression goes, the bear climbs up the stairs, sorry, the bull climbs up the stairs, the bear falls out the window. Suffice so to say, um, bear markets move a lot faster than bull markets. And that's why I tend to be more predisposed to selling and buying. I really love um, shorting because from my experience, you can enjoy a lot more faster movement. So in an upward trend, it's exactly the same um, in terms of principles, selection timing management. So we've got the 20 moving average above the 50, the 50 above the 200, and we have price making high highs and higher lows. Now what we want is at least three consecutive seller bars, each with a lower high and a lower low, and that will give us our pullback. And then what we want is essentially our signal bar, which is um, a bullish pin bar reversal. So essentially, it doesn't matter what color it is, whether it's a buyer bullish pin bar reversal or a seller um, bullish pin bar reversal. It doesn't matter at all. The fact of the matter is, it's after a pullback, it's a sign to us that the bulls have come running it back into the market. And if we get, for example, bullish pin bar reversal with the iconic close in the top um, third of the bar, with the tail three times the distance between our open and close, then that's a good little launch pad potentially for a good continuation to the upside. Okay, so what we do is we place our order above the high of the bullish pin bar reversal with our stop loss below the low, and we wait to be triggered. And just like with the previous example, what we do is we want to be objective in the way we essentially lock in profit and reduce our risk at the same time, whilst giving the market enough room to breathe. So this is why we trail below the love every second buyer bar, so that we can give the market space to do the inevitable retracements as and when. I mean, nothing, like I've said to you twice before, nothing goes up in a straight or down line. And this is where a lot of people come unstuck with their stop losses. They can either be too aggressive, they don't give the market enough room to breathe. And without a management strategy, it's very difficult for people to really get their get a handle on being objective and keeping their cool. No, no one likes seeing their trades and their loss, but also when people are, are in a profit, <laughs> people don't think beyond getting into the setup. And a lot of, certainly amongst amateur traders or people who are new to financial markets trading, they a lot of emphasis is on the entry. And as soon as people get into the trade, not much due care and attention is given to what to do when you're in the trade. So we need to be mechanical, keep a cool head, and have essentially a um, set of rules regardless, okay, for any eventuality. So here we go. This is actually um, a very memorable trade. I mean, this was the pound versus the Australian dollar. This was on the uh, daily time frame, I believe. And this was on the eve of the general elections uh, back in 2015. Um, and we had no idea as to whether the Conservative Party were going to win David Cameron or Labour and Ed Miliband. And we knew full well that, hey, if the market was going to go um, up if the Conservatives won, and it was going to go down if the new well, Labour won. So it was 50-50. We had no idea who was going to win. But, and they were neck and neck in the polls as well. So we knew full well that, hey, if we we're right, then we've got a very good potential upside gain to be made. And if we're wrong, then at least we've lost only 2% of our trading accounts value. We only risk 2% per trade anyway. Um, and from a technical perspective, irrespective of the elections or the referendum or on farm payroll day or anything like that, um, we've got the technical setup. It ticks all the boxes and it looks good for a potential buy. This is why I don't care about news. I find it just a noise. And certainly when people are backtesting and they're looking at technical setups and how they fared over the past one year, two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, it's very seldom that, in fact, it's impossible to factor news into the equation when you are backtesting. So that's why I like to be it's so mechanical and that really does remove a lot of angst from it. So this is how this performed. The Conservatives did win and we still placed a trade anyway and we managed to get out a decent gain, a high probability, lower reward outcome as it's with a trend. Uh, we, we trailed, we got stopped out there. We kept some on, we scaled out of positions, but for the sake of this presentation, we'll just say we got out of the, um, the whole position, but we still got the remaining upside 
of the previous swing high. There we go. I mean, this is a big cycle. This is now phase one extension as we break out this trend line resistance here. So let me um, go to the charts. And I'm going to talk to you about a couple of um, opportunities which we're waiting for at the moment. I mean, with, for example, um, trending markets, they trend about 20% of the time. And we're seeing a lot of ranging at the moment. This is not a typical of summer markets in general. Typically, certainly in August, we see this kind of behavior. I mean, the Australian dollar, um, Aussie dollar, it's just moving sideways. Um, if we get, for example, a, a, a false breakout to the upside and a test of this um, 20 moving average, either in the daily or the weekly time frame, on the daily it would be 50. But here we've got a bearish pin bar reversal. We had a bearish pin bar reversal. We had a lower high to sell. Um, going to gold, um, let's go to this precious yellow. Now, the gold has been um, a bit of a, a bit of a temptress lately. On the um, we call that horizontal uh, level as well as a Fibonacci based, a uh, 0.618 Fibonacci based retracement here. This is a decent level of support on the weekly time frame, but on the daily time frame, um, what we're seeing here is we've seen the previous instance of gold, as you can see, as confirmed by the moving averages, we are trending downwards and we've got the 20 below the 50, the 50 below the 200. So what we're waiting for is a pullback and a rejection of this 20 moving average. If we do get it and a bearish pin bar reversal after free bar retracement, we'll look to sell gold. I'm long term bullish of gold, incidentally, so, and I've been uh, we've been buying it ever since. Um, well, from December last year until um, basically Easter this year, we had a great run, actually. Um, now, obviously, we're in the doldrums for gold and people are talking about the big reversal. We haven't really seen much evidence of it yet, apart from it basically bashing its head against a level of support on the higher time frames. There we go. Just about uh, 12.19, 12.20, 12.16, in this kind of zone here. But until we do get more evidence that we are actually reversing of this level, then we are, according to the daily, in a downward trend, as confirmed by the moving averages. So we'd look to sell the next lower high. Let's talk about something else now. Let's move on to say Euro. Let's talk about Euro New Zealand. There we go. So here we go. We are on the daily time frame. We are in a upward trend still. I know we've got a bigger level of resistance in the way here, but we are still in an upward trend. We've got the, if you look here, we've got a kind of rectangular box here. Uh, or level of support. So what I'll do is wait for a false breakout. So if I get price, we see price going down below this level here, and we get, say for example, the open and close above this um, horizontal level with the tail below it, that would be a false breakout, and that would be a good potential buy in anticipation of price to um, just go up to this point. And if we get a breakout of this horizontal level, then fantastic. If we don't, then nothing has been lost. It all depends on the reward to risk, of course. Okay, so let's move on. We've got um, other examples I want to bring to your attention as well. FTSE as well. I mean, with the FTSE, it's very choppy at the moment, looking at the daily time frame. We really haven't done anything, uh, of, of any meaningful kind of value at the moment. It's just been in this kind of, dare I say, this kind of wedge, and it's just been quite tiresome to trade or just watch, dare I say. But one thing I do want to bring to your attention is the fact that we do get trends inside ranges, and we have it here. Let's take a look at Aussie CAD on the weekly time frame. I just want to show you that here on the weekly time frame, we are in the middle of this long term range. At the moment, you can see that ever since um, 2013 14, price has done nothing but really oscillate between these two levels here, as you can see. So, what we're waiting for long term is for the Australian dollar to weaken um, against the Canadian dollar. Right down to this point, we can see that we've got an ABCD completion point at this, just in around this level here. And I know uh, Gary, previous to me, talked about ABCD uh, patterns. But for me, they mark excellent points of potential reversal, especially if they correlate with a horizontal level that's been well established. Now, this horizontal level here at um, zero spot 9200 is a very strong level of support. And we can see, let me just get rid of some of this clutter here. 
um, so I can demonstrate it to you. Just looking at this, we can reasonably say that it's very likely that the Australian dollar is going to fall even more against the Canadian dollar. We can see that we do have the creation of a potentially an A, B, C, D pattern. And in order to project our point D, we take our Fibonacci extension tool from point B to point A. We can see that we've got a projection of 1.618 just beyond that level. Okay. And we've also got a A, B, C, D pattern here. So we've got two ABCD patterns, one is inside the other. So we've got A, B, C, potentially the D points. But if we just draw point B to point A, you can see that the 1.618 doesn't quite overlap with the previous one, but it's within this area. It's the line, the level is in advance of it. So we could see a false breakout, um, but ultimately you can expect a huge level of support in the way. Um, which we have confirmed with our line, but also the Fibonacci based extension just beyond that as well. But what I'm trying to say to you, irrespective of ABCD patterns, is you can see that this has been ranging for a number of years now. And if we, this is on the weekly time frame. So if we go down to the daily, we can see that we do have decent order angular separation. I know the price in itself is actually quite choppy, but we can see certainly previous examples where we've had decent sell opportunities. And um, we're just, whenever we see the 20 below the 50, the 50 below the 200 in a downward trend, that is our first kind of like um, requirement essentially. So let's move on. You can see that we've just had that uh, dead cross of the 20 moving down below the uh, 200. And we're just about to have it from the looks of it with um, the, uh, 50 about to cross down below the 200. We are about to be confirmed in a downward trend. So what I'll be looking to do, whether it's on the daily or the weekly time frame, in this case it's on the daily, I'll be waiting for a new lower low and a pullback and then look to sell after at least three buy bars uh, and a bearish pin bar reversal. I just want to show you uh, what we did during Brexit. Um, I know this was quite some time ago, but um, let's just... Um, rewind the clock because I want, this is a really good example of just trading inside a range and um, it's powerful stuff. So this is same currency. I also trade reversals as well. We did trade a reversal round about here in December 2015 and this trade lasted about six months. Um, a fantastic trade, dare I say. I mean, we had this horizontal level which hadn't broken um, ever since 2011, so for over five years, it's a very robust, strong level of resistance. And we saw this here as a double top, basically. And we had this setup here. I remember taking this trade, setting up the orders. I just drove him back to Cornwall. I was very tired, but I'm so glad I actually saw this and identified this one at the end of the day. So it placed the entry just below the low, stops above the high. This was a reversal, by the way, so not the strategy um, I talked to you about earlier, but this metamorphosis. You can see we're in a ranging market as we speak, and we've got a huge range. Let me just expand this for you or squish it in so you can see how big this range actually is. All the way at the bottom, it's an extreme range. There we go, <laughs> that's some range. Remember how tight our first entry was at the beginning. Um, so we did very well to take advantage of that. But as you can see over time, in this enormous range, we can see that the moving averages do cross over and now we've confirmed, we're confirmed to have a trending market inside a range. And here we go, we have our first potential opportunity anytime now. There we go. And then. What we're waiting for is another pullback, another lower high. There we go. Here's another opportunity which we took. So you can see we've got great order angular separation between the free moving averages. We've got the 20 below the 50, the 50 below the 200. And that's a great sign to us that we've got speed and momentum in our favor. We've got the wind in our sails here. So what we did was we simply placed an order just below the um, bearish pin bar reversal here, stop loss above the high. First target was the previous swing low. We can see that we've got, certainly as the reversal here had confirmed itself, and we've got all this potential downside, dare I say, there. All this, we're about 
a third of the way through this entire range at the moment. This is one of the best trades that I've taken, multiple entries. So we added to our position. So we took the reversal here. We had another opportunity to sell here and we sold here. And guess what? We sold a couple more times as well. We sold here as well. There we go, lower high, bearish pin bar reversal. And it's signified itself to be like a double top after a retracement. So we traded that, and you get the general kind of uh, gist. We've got a trending market inside a high order range market, and this is what we like really. So who's to say that, okay, it's ranging on the weekly, it doesn't mean that we haven't got any opportunity to take advantage of it on the smaller time frames, like the daily time frame, for example. I love trading crosses. Um, they give us so much more opportunity, and their ultimate um, fate is not essentially are directed by the binary risk on or risk off, or do we have dollar strength or dollar weakness? It's a two horse race b between two different um, trading nations, irrespective of the US dollar, like for example, the British pound versus the Australian dollar, or Euro CAD, for example, or New Zealand yen. It's not all about um, whether the dollar is going up or going down, and it's not so binary. Okay, so we have this going on. Let's move on to what's going on kind of nowadays. I'm pretty sure you'd uh, <laughs> appreciate that a little bit more. So we've already talked about um, gold, um, Euro New Zealand. Let's talk about pound uh, knock. See, this is a cross currency pair, obviously. And I know a lot of people say, why on earth do you trade the Scandis? Why do you trade the Norwegian um, Krona? Well, my simple answer is because it behaves just like any other currency would. Okay, so it's, if we've got it here, certainly on the daily time frame, sorry, I've gone on the weekly for some reason, you can see that we've got the moving averages crossing over. Okay, admittedly, the cyclicity on this one isn't as smooth as some of the other currencies, but it's always good to have these on our watch list anyway, in case we get a, row, a really nice pullback with multiple confirmations, and it's a decent setup. I mean, markets change and evolve over time, and that is, that is certain. Nothing ever stays the same. So, moving on, we talked about Euro New Zealand, the pound Aussie as well. I mean, certainly the weekly time frame, I prefer trading than the daily, it's a lot more stable. So, here we go on the um, we've got the 50 moving average below the um, the 20, we've got the 200 below the 50. Um, it looks like we have had the market attempt a higher low here, but we did not get our signal to buy here, unfortunately. Um, you can see the market is starting to trend upwards. We've had higher lows, numerous higher lows. So one, two, three, four, and potentially five. We just need to wait for our, our bullish pin bar reversal on the weekly time frame before we actually uh, trade this one to the upside. Okay, so that is pound Aussie. So that's on the watch list. We've got the 20 above the 50, the 50 above the 200. Relatively speaking, in a in a basket of say 26 currencies, you're going to expect about 15 to 20 percent of them, or even even less, having this kind of order angle and separation of the moving averages. Okay, so this is why I like to draw up a short list um, of them. So let's just move down the selection. Pound CAD. Well, unfortunately, this one seems to have had <laughs> run out of luck on the weekly time frame. We're just in the transition process just crossing over the moving averages. But now on the daily, we can see that we're about to have the dead cross. Certainly the 20 is about to cross over the 200. The 50 is a little bit further away. But all we know, we know is that we are due to make a uh, potentially a lower high. Again, made a lower high here and um, to an extent here. But what we want to do is take out this low here and then we can, that will help accelerate this moving average crossover and then what we'll do is we'll look to sell any rally we get. All right, so that is pound CAD. Let's move on. Pound yen, same same kind of deal. I know it's a little bit choppy. It's not quite as uh, clean as some of the other ones we've looked at, like gold, for example, in this downward trend. You can see that we do have a certain amount of indecision here, but the moving averages tell us that the 20 is below the 50, the 50 is below the 200, so we're officially in a downward trend. What we'd want, it's the same story really with the weekly time frame. We've just had a crossover of the 20 and 
the uh, 50. So what I'll wait for is for a new low to be made and a pullback and to sell um, the lower high, punctuated with a bearish pin bar reversal. And Swiss, we've already talked about that. But you can really apply this to any kind of asset class, whether it's a stock or commodity, anything like that, wheat. Here we go. Here's another example, actually, of um, a, a currency pair in, to all intents and purposes, inside a range on the weekly time frame. Um, I think, irrespective of the trend strategy we're talking about, if as and when price gets up to this level, this would be a fantastic sell level for the US dollar versus the Norwegian krona. We just need to wait very patiently for this, like we have to do for a number of our trades here, like um, um, Aussie CAD, which I just talked to you about. So let's go down to the daily time frame. You might not see much going on the on the um, weekly time frame, but if you scale down to the daily, you'll see slightly more in terms of what's going on in the present. No, we've got, okay, so we've got the 20 above the 50, the 50 above the 200, that's all very well and good. We're not exactly trending in the fast market, as you can see we're moving sideways, which is a little bit frustrating. This is why we like to look at the angle. If the angle is facing between 12 and 2 o'clock, then fantastic, but, and that will qualify a decent upward move with um, momentum and velocity. But this, you can see here, the moving averages are pointing towards three o'clock, and that is always um, a bit tricky, quite frankly, um, because it shows us that there's no real movement. Here we go. So this is the New Zealand versus the US dollar. Now, on the weekly time frame, what we've done with this is, again, we can see that the moving averages tell us that we're moving sideways because they're facing towards 3 p.m. So this is essentially, we traded this one long as a range-based play. We traded this a bullish pin bar reversal to the upside based on the fact that we've got trend line support here. Once, twice, thrice. We've got price doing nothing really, apart from oscillating between this level here and this level here. We also have the completion of an ABCD pattern here the 1.272 extension that gave us a decent uh, potential confluence that we will see price actually respond to this level. And it did. It is trying to. We got pipped in uh, a number of weeks ago and we've just been kind of offside until potentially this week. I always give it four bars and to, to give us our verdict, quite frankly. Um, if we don't get any kind of verdict after four bars, whether it's four weeks on the weekly chart or four days on the daily chart or four hours trading the hourly chart, then we can just simply, if we're not in profit or able to scale out or anything like that, then you might as well just kill the trade because it's a laggard. And um, the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar, as we've been in this trade, one, two, three weeks, we're in our fourth week. If it doesn't do anything after four weeks, after this week, then we're just going to kill the trade. Okay, but you can see the logic we had behind trading this one as a reversal. Okay, so this is why we trade reversals. They're higher risk than trend-based plays. Um, but quite frankly, as markets don't trend a lot of the time, it makes sense to know how to trade, <laughs> trade reversals. And certainly I'll do a seminar, a webinar on trading reversals for you at a later date. Okay, so let's move on. I think they're very good to play reversals. And reversals are higher risk. Um, much greater chance of losing money. However, with those winning reversals that you trade, then you do get certainly more money for those winning trades than if you're trading um, trend-based plays. So essentially, a trend-based strategy will give you a higher probability of success but a smaller level of reward, whereas a reversal trade will give you a rapidly, grossly diminished chance of success, but for those successes that you do have, you get a far higher reward. Okay, so it's good to mix up the old portfolio with that. Okay, so hopefully giving you um, more of an idea as to how we can do this based on previous examples and today's rather lackluster market. They're really, for me, the summer markets have traditionally been the ones where I like to take a holiday from trading. I, of course, I still check the markets every day and do my analysis every week and share it with our online trading community every day and every week. But typically summer, things quieten down in the markets. Everyone's on holiday 
and um, certainly in August, there is very seldom you get any kind of voracious moves. Okay, so end of day trading, end of week trading is fantastic because it does free up time and it frees up emotion rather than watching the charts all day. I think we're all guilty of doing something like that where you're watching or trade going in and out of profit and it's emotionally exhausting. Um, we can benefit from the stability of higher order timeframes and we can capture the bigger moves and really it's a sweet spot because there's a disproportionate relationship between what you can make from trading and the time spent in front of the screen and trading the daily and the weekly time frame where you're trading reversals or trend based plays um, you can achieve this okay so I know we're running out of time so one thing I want to do today exclusively for those of you who've made the effort to come is to give you access on our flagship ultimate program which is valued at $1,997 you'll get um, access to our online trading community and you'll be taught every step of the way from beginner to professional in how to trade the daily and the weekly time frame both trending markets and reversal markets we'll be, we're dedicated to helping our um, global client base um, essentially become profitable traders profitable and successful traders um, trading alongside their day jobs and trading part-time generally set and forget opportunities where they can just leave them to run whilst they go about their working life or their social life or their family life they can just be rest assured that these setups and moves in the market are just happening whilst they're doing other things okay that's why i call it lifestyle trading what i'm going to give you is access to our state-of-the-art portal which is pretty new it's app driven it's fantastic you've got access to everything we don't hold back we share trade ideas market analysis a number of contributors who've had a vast amount of experience in the field of trading for decades and um we also give you a professionally recognized certificate as well after your training which you can take at any time and it has your time to prove to us, prove to yourself that you're worthy of a pass, a merit or a distinction. Who knows what you're capable of, but certainly you can get all the answers to the questions in the exam in our training. And we are rigorous in how we train you. OK, so it's valued at $1,997 and I even think that's a snip. So what we're going to be doing is to give you access for one dollar. This deal is only valid until midnight tonight. We're going to get also access to our pattern recognition software and our trader hypnosis audio pack which has been developed by our very own Kay Lee. And basically all you need to do to get access to our ultimate program is sign up to the link in the chat window. Sorry, the link is wrong here. It's not Forex training. It's online trading course. Read the terms and conditions, buy the ultimate program and use the promo code traders talk in lower case. OK, that will give you your uh, discount to one dollar okay so what that will give you is access to our um, webinars trade ideas get access to all of our strategies both basic and advanced our examinations our professionally recognized qualification podcasts our moderated forums um, you get it all video tutorials downloadable pdfs and after your one dollar trial you can either continue on the subscription it's 160 dollars a month or you can cancel it's entirely up to you but we look forward to working with you and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to write the proper uh, link for that deal in the chat window because i've given you the wrong link and i apologize for that by the way <laughs> so here we go Oh, I think uh, Tanya's uh, posted the link. There we go. So, yeah, <laughs> you've got it there. It was wrong in the slides, but you've got it right in the chat window. So hopefully we'll see you on board and uh, we look forward to working with you. And I'd like to thank Tanya uh, very much for um, inviting us onto the show.